Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about the pumping lemma and an intuition of how it works and why it works the way it does. We're not going to cover the proof of the pumping lemma, but you are invited to uh, peruse the, um, the proof, which is accompanied in the, um, available in the Turing library, specifically in the regular expression module. Okay, so the idea behind the pumping lemma is just a property that uh, people observe that regular languages, um, that all regular languages have. So this is a property of all regular languages. And to be able to explain it, you can prove this property using regular expressions or, or DFAs or NFAs, but for the sake of um, explanation or to get a more intuitive feel, it is perhaps more um, appealing that we use a visual formalism such as the one of NFAs. So consider the NFA on the right here that I'm highlighting. The idea of the pumping lemma is that any language that you might imagine, starting from a certain length, will, will have a very interesting property, and that is as follows. So you can, first we are only interested in loops, and we're going to talk about later if we care about languages with loops or not. But the, the, the interesting thing about regular languages is Let's consider NFAs that have a certain loop. So in this case, we have two loops. We have one here in Q2 and another one in Q0, right? This self loop with zero or this self loop with one. So the, the language of this NFA is such that for a given length, whatever string I find will go through the loop at least whatever uh, string you pick you have to go through a certain state. And that state is an interesting one because it has a self loop, which means that you can take a given string and then pump it that by following the loop and accepting, generating other strings that will also be accepted by that NFA. So what does this mean? Let's give you an example. So in this case, the length is at least two. Okay, so if you give me a string of at least two, let's say one, zero. It means I can always divide it or you will go through a state that has a loop, right? And because it goes through a state that has a loop, then I can give you a, a series of other strings that are also in that language or, or that is to say that they are also accepted by the NFA. So for instance, one, one, zero is in the, in the accepted and one, one, zero is accepted and you can go through this cycle many times. And if you think about it, this holds true for any NFA. As long as you have a loop, right? You have to consider just the number of states that are connected. And then at any point, if there is a loop, if, if you have a, a, a length, there's, there's a certain length that will have to go necessarily through the loop, right? Because we don't, um, if we don't consider visiting back the same state because if we visit back to the same state that means we already went through a loop right so because there's a finite number a number of states there's always this situation where you will cycle back 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 to a loop to a to a given node of your graph which is a state that has a loop, a loop either directly like here or indirectly through an, another state so you could say for instance that q2 goes to some q4 and then some Q5, and then eventually goes back to Q2, right? So in that case as well, you could find a length that is at least the number of all states, such that if you give me any string that has at least as many states as you have in the automaton, then you would have to necessarily go through that loop, okay? And then, given that initial state that crosses one of these states and goes through a possibility of a loop, I can pump that loop and generate new strings. So I can divide my string into an X portion, a Y portion, and a Z portion, such that the Y is basically the string that goes through the loop. So in this case would be the one, right? So I can pump this one multiple times, but if you had multiple states, you could imagine that you would have one, two, three, four, five, and it means you would generate that string multiple times, okay? 
So to convince you, I'm going to ask you to give me any string of at least length 3. Right? And if you give me, let's say, 1, 0, 0. Okay? Because you, you said 1, 0, 0, you see already that you already went through that loop once. Right? Okay. So that means I can partition your string, the string you gave me, into three parts, such that the part in the middle goes through the loop. Okay, so in this case, the first part, the left-hand side, would be 1, 0, 1, 0. The part in the middle is the part that goes through the loop, so that is to say 0. And then on the right-hand side, we have, it could possibly be empty, which it is. So in this case, let's discard z. So now, I can replicate that 0 in the middle as many times as I want. And any string generated by pumping that y n times will also be accepted by the automata, right? Another thing that can happen is I can omit it, omit y altogether, and the generated string is also in the automata. Okay, so that means that if one zero, and then you have the other zero, if I omit the zero altogether, I have one zero which is also in the string. Right? So one zero is accepted, and then one zero and I go here twice is also accepted. And if I go three times, it's obviously accepted. And if I go a thousand times, it would also be accepted. So let's say you gave me another string. You gave me a string of size four. So now you did, you went once here and then twice here. So once, twice. So you, you covered two loops. Okay, so I could divide it in such a way where now x is just the first one. And then the, the loop that I'm picking is q2. And then the rest is whatever is here. So 0 and then 0. That means I can pump this 1 or I can omit it and the string will still be accepted. Yes, because 1, 0, 0 is accepted, which is this case. And then when you pump it, you go through the loop twice, it is also accepted. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0 is accepted. And then you can pump it as many times as you want and it will still be accepted. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how we can formulate the pumping lemma formally.